Hello, this is Mrs. Murdoch, and I'm going to do a, um, a detailed explanation of photosynthesis here um, using a couple of videos that, um, that should help illustrate this process in detail. So what you're looking at right now is the inside of a chloroplast, an organelle that's only found in autotrophs, right? So you have um, something here that should look familiar to you. If you remember from respiration, a mitochondria had a double membrane, and a chloroplast also has a double membrane. And mitochondria has an electron transport chain that we learned about that, that where you have flow of electrons and that fuels the making of ATP. And it turns out chloroplasts have that inner membrane and that electron transport chain as well. The, the difference is in the source of energy. In a mitochondria, um, the electron transport chain source of energy was electrons carried by, by electron carriers that came from food. Food molecules was what drove the making of ATP in a mitochondria. But in this chloroplast, in the first part of photosynthesis, in the light reactions, it's light that fuels the electron transport chain and the making of ATP. So I'm just going to let this play for just a moment here. All right, so just like in the mitochondria, you have electrons flowing through these electron transport proteins and then influencing the flow of hydrogens that then gather here to form a hydrogen ion gradient, just like in mitochondria. And that gradient then fuels, um, as it goes through the ATP synthases, fuels the making of ATP. That ATP that's made inside a chloroplast um, has a different fate than the ATP that's made in mitochondria. In mitochondria, all the ATP that's made in a mitochondria is going to go out into the cell, whether it's a heterotroph or an autotroph, and, and help with all the cell work of the cell in all throughout the cytoplasm. In a chloroplast, it's a little bit different. That ATP is going to be used primarily to fuel the next part of photosynthesis, which is the Calvin cycle that I'll discuss here in a few minutes. So that's one of the products of um, the, the light reactions, is these chlorophyll molecules catch that light energy, influences the electrons to leave the chlorophyll molecules and move through the electron transport chain, pumping the hydrogen, making the ATP. Um, so the other thing that happens um, is remember that water is also split down here. Don't forget that part. And remember that when the electrons leave this photosystem two here, um, it leaves kind of a, a, a space, a hole in uh, in those chlorophyll molecules that from that that um, that donate those electrons to the process. That um, that hole, that electron those electrons that are missing here are replenished by the splitting of water molecules, which creates oxygen gas and also uh, provides electrons to refill that, um, those missing electrons here. Okay, I'm going to let her keep going because the other thing that comes out of the light reactions are uh, um, full electron carriers. So she explains that well. I'm going to let her do that.
Okay, so the two products that come out of the light reactions are ATP and NADPH, which sounds an awful lot like NADH in the mitochondria, doesn't it? And that's because it's almost the exact same molecule that does almost the exact same job. The only difference between NADPH and NADH is that NADPH is only found in chloroplasts and it has a phosphate group attached to it. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the other second part of photosynthesis, which is the Calvin cycle. So the Calvin cycle works like this. That reviews what we are. Okay, Calvin cycle is the second part of photosynthesis. This is where the sugars are actually made. It's the synthesis part of photosynthesis. It is not the Krebs cycle. Don't confuse this with the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is only in mitochondrion, and it's very, very different from the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is going to take inorganic carbon from the atmosphere, inorganic carbon dioxide, and, and go take it through three steps. It's going to take the carbon dioxide and fix it, called fixation, uh, so that it becomes organic, attach it to other organic molecules. It's then going to reduce those organic molecules into sugars, and then it's going to recycle some of those organic molecules back into the beginning intermediate to meet up with more carbon dioxides. Those are the three parts of the Calvin cycle that he's about to explain. So fixation first, then reduction, then recycling, regeneration. We'll let him explain it. Okay, so this is a five carbon compound that's coming up here to meet with the carbon dioxides as they come in. Um, it's just an intermediate. You don't really need to know a whole lot about it, except count each one has five carbons. So if you add one carbon dioxide, one carbon to each, you're going to wind up with three six carbon molecules. They're not going to be sugars yet, though. They're going to be um, they're going to be six carbon molecules that then are going to need to be reduced in, until they're fully um, fully count as carbohydrates. So I'm going to let him continue. Okay, I just want to make the point here that it looks like um, oxygen, maybe double um, diatomic oxygen is being created here. It's not. That oxygen is being incorporated into the full molecule. Remember, oxygen gas in photosynthesis comes from the splitting of water in the light reactions, not from the breaking down of carbon dioxide. So just remember that. <laughs> PGA is um, phosphoglyceracetate, okay? It's still acidic. An acid is not the same as a carbohydrate. So fixation takes it to the point where you have six three-carbon acids, but you don't have sugars yet. In order to get to the sugar stage, uh, you have to reduce them, and that's where the high-energy high electrons and the ATP comes in. Okay, PGAL stands for phosphoglyceraldehyde. It also is called uh, G3P, which you might have seen in your textbook if you've already read through this. It just means a three carbon carbohydrate that has a phosphate sticking onto the end of it. 
So what's going to happen next? Now the reduction phase is over. One of these, and only one of them, uh, it gets to be kept by the cell. So it keeps one of the p-gals, and that can be used to make more sugars. You can take one and add it to another one, and then you have a six-carbon glucose. Or you can take those and link them together and get sucrose or whatever. The other five get regenerated, kind of recycled back into those ruby peas we began with so that you can continue the cycle with more carbon dioxide. So each part of the cycle makes one useful p-gal, and then the other p-gals get recycled back in to meet up with the incoming carbon dioxides and other ATPs and NADPHs that are coming from the light reactions. That is photosynthesis in greater detail, and I hope that this was helpful.